Jack. Hey, Neil. So no one told me this. I, I discovered this on my own. That if, if for those of you who have ridden airplanes, I know some people have never been in an airplane. I highly recommend it. It's quite a marvel of engineering and physics and yeah. and, and aerodynamics. Or you can watch YouTube. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, if you could save up, if you've never been on an airplane, find a place to fly to and just check it out. It's, it's, it's quite a marvel. It, and I, I marvel at it every day, even though we've been doing it for more than 100 years. So I noticed when I pull down the shades, and I can't see outside, mm -hmm. and I, I look at this drink, and the water level is completely horizontal. Okay. All right, that means we're just there. We're not, you know, accelerating or banking or turning. Okay, it's just there. And it stays that way the entire trip. Right. Now, I know the plane has got to make some turns when it comes near. I know it's got to do this at some point. Right, yes. If it does that, I would expect the water level to tilt within the glass. I'd expect me to lean in one way or another, at, in the way it would happen in a car. If you make a, a, a left turn in a car, your body leans to the right, okay? Because you actually want to keep going in a straight line, but the car is curving in front of you. So it feels like you're getting pushed to the right, but really you're just going in a, you, you want to go in a straight line, the car won't let you. And you're getting pushed against the door. Okay, or you turn left or right, whichever, or someone's sitting next to you, your shoulders will touch. All right, no longer does that happen on an airplane. So what I did was let me try this with the shade up. I do it with the shade up. I look out this window, I see sky. I look out across the plane, I see the ground. This sucker is banking, and yet the water on my table is completely flat. Okay. So... There's only one thing that can be happening here, because I don't think humans have this ability. The computer is flying the airplane, and you program into the computer such that the radius of the turn and the speed at which you're going requires that the plane be at a certain banking angle so that all the centrifugal forces combine with gravity so that you don't even know you're banking this turn. Hmm. In other words, the urge to fall into the middle of the circle gets completely balanced with the centrifugal force to send you out of the circle so that the gravity vector still goes directly to the bottom of the glass and to your rump into the chair. And you don't even know the plane is turning. Those three numbers, mm -hmm. If you, if you choose them correctly, you can have them conspire so that you would never know the plane was ever turning at any time. Well, clearly you have never been on Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Top <10. laughs> The pilot's in there. <laughs> they, don't even, they don't even use the joist. They use an actual steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's a fine airline where they have fully trained yeah. pilots. Uh -huh. um, yeah. okay. But the precision necessary to do that, to do that reliably, to do that without the judgment of the pilot, is um, uh, that, that takes a computer. And if you look at old movies where they show people on airplanes and the airplane is turning, you'll see people sort of leaning to the one right. side or the other. Right. That is no longer a thing in airplanes. And, and, and you know what you just reminded me of when you're talking about going back is old episodes of Star Trek, the first Star Trek, where the entire crew would go to the left <laughs> and then they go to the they right. Lead. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd all be instructed to do this, right? right. So, they, so they take the camera and tip the camera. And right? they tip so. the camera and they would all do that <laughs> to make it look like they were banking. And they were in space, so. <laughs> So if you if you bank a turn properly, you never feel that that effect. And by the way, we've talked about this with NASCAR. All right, what the banked turn in a racetrack, there is a speed with which you can drive your car, so that you never have to touch the steering wheel, and the car will make a complete turn on that bank and end up going back the other way. Right. And that speed is one where you will not feel like you're 
uh, leaning to the left or the right? Because the road is turning for you. The road is turning the car for you. Correct. And at, at the right speed, you'll feel the gravity vector doing whatever it was doing before you entered that turn. It's the same physics principle uh, at work there. So uh, I just thought I'd put that out there, just a little uh, discovery I made. I haven't checked with anybody if, who did it and when it started, but I, st I began noticing it. And you should notice it too. Just, just check it out. You, there could be sky here and brown down there, and you don't even notice it unless you look out the damn window. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. Well, you know, I, I fly spirit, so I notice it all the time. <laughs> it's tough. Wait, <laughs> one last thing. If you are in space, uh -huh. there is no banking of turns. Yes, okay. right. Well, I'll tell you why. Because, because so, so on a track, the thing that's turning the car for you is the road itself. Okay. okay. That's a force there that's turning the car. If you are in an airplane, you are banking on a cushion of air as you complete your turn. Mm -hmm. If you're in space, there is no force doing that. So if you're in space, you just have to fire rockets. Right. And, and so, so, so they don't tip and turn. Uh, it looks cool when the TIE fighters did that in Star Wars and, right. and, and the Millennium Falcon. You know, it looks cool, but that's not how it would happen. You just have the rockets change the direction um, that, that it turns in. So all of those maneuvers that you see the Millennium Falcon make when in space. Yeah, the maneuvers, for a, they're atmospheric maneuvers. They're not yeah, that, vacuum None maneuvers. of that means anything. Right, right, it's, right. Yeah, wow. Plus, didn't they, at the end of the Star Wars Episode Four, when they had the, the you know, the, uh, when they were celebrated for destroying the, 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 the Death Star. The Death Star. They, didn't they just fly in from an open bay exposed to the vacuum of space? And then they just get out and walk around? Yes. I see. Uh, but I think there's a force shield that holds the atmosphere inside the ship, though. Well, you just made that up right now. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. That's, yeah. That's, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. That's, that's, uh -huh. I think that's how it works. There's okay. Force magic field force fields. Okay. Yes, fine. They, like, yeah. I mean, but seriously, there's nothing in Star Wars that that's scientific. <laughs> let's be honest. I mean, seriously, there's. You know, the least believable thing to me was here's the here are the fighters coming in, and there's the guy with with the with the traffic cones <laughs> directing. Yes. <laughs> it's like, still, right. You, you don't have a better way to do this in the yeah. 25th century or whenever the hell this thing takes place. And the other thing is, too, they all fly in and um, n nobody fires retro rockets. Oh, they just slow down. They just yeah. slow down. Like in yeah, Star yeah. Trek, though, when you fly into a shuttle bay, uh, there is a kind of like a tractor beam that grabs you and then you come in and that's how yeah, you correct. stop. Yeah, correct. Correct. Because Star in, Trek thinks about science. Yeah. But Star Wars, they're just like, you know, coming in. <laughs> I'm coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is this is Airplane Banking 101, Jack. Well, that's cool, actually. All right. This has been uh, an explainer jamboree. Stuff you thought you knew in three segments. And so I hope you like these, Chuck, because I, you know, I bend your ear on them. I love them. Uh, they're great. I mean, and I actually do learn stuff and i gotta tell you man that i mean there there it's really it's great information to have at a cocktail party okay because <laughs> you'd otherwise just be completely boring at a exactly. cup of, i gotta pull out a nihilism here if just right. exactly <laughs> it's like you should go talk to that guy i thought he was uh, a stupid uh, comedian uh, but god uh, he's brilliant uh, the guy's brilliant <laughs> i thought he was a stupid comedian what <laughs> kind <laughs> So, Chuck, we got to call this one quits. I, I hope you enjoyed this one. Always, always. Very good, very good. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always. Keep looking up.